Hey there, in this video we are going to look at two ways that you can verify trig identities. Not prove, just verify. And those two ways are substitution and graphing. Alright, so identities can be verified by a couple of different methods here. One is by substitution of specific values and confirming that the same value results from each side when you evaluate it. Or the other way is by graphing both sides of the identity, a function for each side, and seeing that the two graphs appear to be equivalent. Now, neither of these ways are a way of proving that a trig identity is true in all cases, but they're ways of checking, verifying that they do work. All right, so we're going to look at an identity and verify it in both those ways as an example. So the example we're going to use is the quotient identity for tangent, and that is the one that goes like this. Tangent of theta is equal to sine of theta divided by cosine of theta. So by substitution, we can just pick a value and substitute it in and see what we get. We can put several values in and see what we get. In other words, we can, let's say we choose 1.9 and on the other side sine of 1.9 cosine of 1.9 so we can go to our calculator and evaluate that so if we check tangent of 1.9 that value we were going to substitute in we get that as the value so that's what the left side of that identity is equal to when theta is equal to 1.9 now we can check the other side I'm going to put it in like this and we're going to go sine of 1.9 divided by cosine of 1.9 and we get that same value right we could do the same thing go up here and put in a different value for this if we could put in whatever we want here right 13.68 9 or whatever get that value and then we can go up here and put this in again go in here 13.689 you get that same value those two values match all right, so just to complete this here, we'll put that, I believe that value for that first number we substituted in was 2.972, I'm going to put dot, dot, dot there, equals negative 2.972. All right, so that's the first way you can verify a trig identity or any identity, is to substitute in values like that. Our other way is by graphing. Now, essentially, this is going to involve creating a graph for two different functions. One is a function that represents this side, and one is a function that represents this side, and then just confirming that those two graphs are equivalent to each other. So we're going to put in y, I'm going to call it y1 equals tangent of theta, and y2 equals sine theta over cos theta. Now in a lot of graphing programs and pieces of software, you're going to have to put x in here instead of theta, but you do what is necessary on whatever it is you're using. I am going to use Desmos to create these two graphs. All right, so we're going to put in here our first one, y1 equals tangent of, again, I'm going to use x, just because it's the simplest thing to put in there. There's our tangent graph. Now maybe we'll go in here and change the horizontal axis so that it shows the values in terms of pi because that's a little easier to make sense of not that we're really going to be looking too closely at the individual values and then I'm going to put the other function y2 as sine x divided by cos x all right so you see when you look at those two graphs it sure appears that they're exactly the same graph turning off one and turning it back on again now again this is not a way of proving that they're the same because we can't say for sure that it doesn't differ the farther we go here. But we could certainly do this 
and uh, keep moving here and you notice that it's the same no matter where you go. All right, so maybe we'll go back to around the origin again and maybe I'll change this just so that we can see both at once. I'll make this blue one a dotted line like that and then we can see the both of them there. Maybe it looks better like that. No, like that's probably good. All right, so that's both of those graphs. All right, so maybe we'll put a copy of our graph here, paste this in here, and just to show what we've done, make it a bit smaller so it fits underneath there. All right. Let's look at another example. So here we have something and we're going to look at whether it could be an identity. So what we can do is verify and if it comes up that our verification is a is a no, then we know that it's definitely not an identity. And if our verification comes up as yes, then we know it might be an identity or it could be an identity. It's not that it's a for sure an identity. For that, we would have to go through and prove it. But if it comes up as a yes, we know it's possibly an identity. So to verify by substitution as our first method, we're going to just pick a value for theta. You know, it could be anything. Like I'm going to pick 2.1, let's say. And then we're going to substitute it into the left side. So we're going to have sine of 2.1 times tangent of 2.1. And on the right side, we're going to have cosecant 2.1 minus sine 2.1. Then we'll go to the calculator to work that out. I should probably put an kind of a question mark above that equal sign because we don't know yet. We're, that's what we're checking here, right? So go to the calculator. So on our calculator here, then we're going to punch all of that in. Sine of 2.1 times tangent of 2.1. We'll see what that value is. Negative 1.47 and so on. And the right side, we'll put that in. Now, well, there's no cosecant button on here, so we're going to have to put in 1 over sine of 2.1 to enter cosecant 2.1. And then we need to go out here and subtract sine of 2.1. And we'll see what that value is. Now, that value is a different value than that. Now, assuming, confirming I put everything in here correctly, which it looks like I did. Now, those two values being different, that one and that one, for each side. So we have roughly 1.4759. It's definitely not equal to 0.2952, right? So the fact that an arbitrary value we picked doesn't work that thing can't be an identity because this is a valid value for that variable and it doesn't work. The two sides are not equal. So those two are not equal. So it's not an identity. All right. So let's do it by graphing now. So for graphing, our approach is we're going to graph a function for each side here and see what we get. So we're going to graph y1 equals sine theta tan theta and y2 equals cosecant theta minus sine theta. So we'll go to Desmos and graph that and see what we get. So our first function there was we're going to y1 was equal to sine, we're going to use an x here and the way Desmos works it's going to want me to put brackets around it there because, well let me show you if you put that and this, it says there's an error here and it says it needs parentheses around the argument of sine. So we need to put this. It doesn't need them around the second one, but if you want to make it consistent there, you can do that. That's our first function. And y2, it was cosecant. Now on here, on Desmos, you can punch in cosecant. You don't need to put it in as one over sine because it recognizes this, but we want now minus sine of x. When it's subtracted, it doesn't need parentheses around it, but for when it's multiplied like that, it seems to need it. So we have our two functions there. Now, it might be that you've never seen what those functions look like, but regardless, you can tell that those are definitely not the same graph. So as long as we've entered it correctly and we can see that it's not the same graph, then that's 
also a way of confirming, verifying that it's not an identity. All right, so the graphs are different, so it's not an identity. All right, so there's two ways of verifying an identity, and you can use verification to check if something could be an identity. In this case, we've determined it's not an identity because we've found one value here it doesn't work for, and on the graph, actually, this is a whole bunch of values that that's not the same for. Now, if this had come up as the two sides being equal, and this had come up where the graphs were identical, again, remember that it just means it might be an identity because we don't know what happens if we look off the graph. All we can see is this portion of it. And if we test a value, all we've done is test that one value. So we can't say for sure it works for all values. For that, you would have to do a, a proof, which you're gonna get to a little later. All right, so that's it for verifying trig expressions and identities. Thank you.